You know, one deal is nothing. It's one deal. You're not going to get rich off one, one deal, but enough of them are going to set you free. And that's what you want is that legacy of freedom to do whatever it is that you want to do all day long. And that comes from good relationships and core values. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. A lot of people struggle to raise private money, but what if you were able to buy real estate with none of your own money and always bring home multiple checks on every transaction you do? Well, that's exactly what my guest does on a regular basis since 2016, and he's raised millions in private money. Today, I'll be talking with my good friend, Steve Zumagale, also known as Real Estate Steve. Now, Steve is going to share where he finds these lenders and how you can too. Steve's private money strategy has completely transformed his real estate business. So if you want funding for your deals without ever needing any of your own money to do your deals, don't miss a second of this episode. So Steve, how much private money have you raised anyway? Well, Jay, about $2 million and we have access to more. $2 million. So when I ask you how much private money have you raised, uh, what kind of money are we talking about? Who are you borrowing this money from? Um, anybody that would like to earn a higher rate of return safely and securely. And so what I did was I made a top 50 list and just let everybody know how successful Freedom Sky's business has become. And then explain to them that we can offer them rates that are 1000% more than the common rates that they get on such smaller investments like bank CDs. I mean, understand that if you give some, if bank CDs are paying you a point and you give them two points, that is 100% more. So if we're offering between eight and 10%, that is 1000% more than they would get on a normal, regular investment vehicle. So are you saying you are borrowing money for your real estate deals from individuals or is any of this institutional money, banks or hard money? So most of the money that we borrow is from individuals. Now we also have a full gamut. We do have about six to eight banks that we work with here locally. However, to get things started with no money down real estate, you can't bring certain assets to financial lenders. You have to stabilize them first to make them desirable. So the only way to do that is to borrow from individuals such as private lenders. Like you said it best, Jay, ain't granny leaving church in the Cadillac kind of money. <laughs> so so you, just said, you just said something interesting. You said that you used private money to invest in real estate deals with no money down. So you're bringing no money to the closing table out of your own pocket. That is true. And because of you, we actually follow the cardinal rule is, is always borrow more than you need. So you're not bringing any of your own money to the closing table when you buy and you borrow more than you need. Does that mean that you are getting a check when you buy and bring none of your own money? That is correct. We are getting a check. So how in the world do you do that? I mean, who in the world would loan you money and why would they loan you money without you having any, what, you know, traditional banks uh, call uh, skin in the game? Sure. So I think with most listeners that either have raised a little bit or haven't raised that much yet, I think it's more of a mindset control that they have to get through. So it's not that I want somebody to give me money and provide a greater return. That doesn't even sound fun. Like what we're offering is an unprecedented massive value that is a high rate of return backed by a hard asset attached to the earth. So, I mean, we don't have to worry about what the stock market's doing up and down. 
you know, we can give them a fixed rate of return, which will always exceed a variable rate of return long term. So with these um, people that are lending, you know, you have to think to yourself, like most people work their whole lives, they get into their 40s, 50s and 60s, and they have that nest egg built up. And all it would take is like one down year where they are drawing on this capital for retirement and they get hit with the down year. So not only did it go down, but they're still drawing on it. It's, it makes it impossible to recover. So preservation of capital is the very first most important thing to somebody that has built a nest egg. And a fixed rate of return will always exceed that of a variable rate of return, especially if the preservation of capital is first and foremost, like the first position mortgage is on a piece of real estate. So when you started investing, what year did you start investing in real estate? 2016. 2016. So when you started investing in real estate, did you start out by using private money? Did you use other strategies first? What did your real estate investing business look like prior to using private money to fund your deals? Well, Jay, I didn't know you in 2016. <laughs> <Jeez>. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, people always ask me that. It's like, cause they, they get going with this and they look at somebody like a, like a Jay Connor or somebody that's built up a massive portfolio and they go, can I really do that? And the, and the answer is yes. But then they look at somebody that is like a middle to upper tier that's built like our business or freedom skies business. And they're like, well, if Steve can do it, I can do it. And that's the whole point to this podcast is to make you see and believe that you can, you can duplicate it. So back in 2016, we actually, the, it still is one of my favorite properties to this day. It's a three unit. Um, I don't know. I think we paid maybe 175 for it and we put 20% down. I mean, we're 25% down. That's the only thing I really knew, you know, and now the property is worth, I don't know, 220,000 something. And we only owe a hundred thousand and then we've made 10 grand every single year on it too. But that's like a slow way to build wealth. It, it, it truly is. It took five years, you know, and we had to personally guarantee it. And I can, my, my money was used. I only could buy one property with that, with that money. So for people watching, the best thing for you to do wouldn't have been to put money down on a piece of real estate and go personally guarantee debt. It would have been to take that money and pair up with somebody that has you know, probably a deca million dollar portfolio or more that has borrowed a lot of private money, has not personally guaranteed a lot of debt and, and scaled to become a multimillionaire and cling to them and learn, cling to the mentor and more, learn. That little bit of money that you would have gave to learn will grow 10x, 20x, 30x, you know, instead of putting money down, if that makes sense. So that very first real estate deal that you did, you used the local bank, you used like traditional <laughs> funding, right? Right. And did you do any other type of deal? So you started in 2016. How long did you real, uh, invest in real estate prior to starting to use private money? Uh, my first private money loan was in the end of 2017, I want to say. Okay. So you'd been doing it for at least a year. So in yeah. that first, in that first year of investing in real estate, um, how did you fund your deals? I'm sure you did some other deals. I mean, did you do I like, do I didn't know any better. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, I, I, I wanted to buy more, but I didn't know how. And then everybody was like, you don't need money to buy real estate. And I'm like blown away. Like when somebody told me that, you know, um, so it just took watching somebody like you and linking up with multiple gurus to teach me that there is no other way to buy real estate besides no money down and, and private money and creative financing. I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. So did you do any uh, creative financing or did you uh, buy any uh, houses, say like on terms with, you know, seller financing or subject to the existing note prior to starting to use uh, private money? Um, or was private money really your first launching pad? Actually, we had a couple smaller, no money down seller finance deals when the 2018 market was really like a buyer's market. Some stuff wasn't selling. And so we were able to approach those, you know, few sellers on terms. And I 
you know, we, we did it. I, I could have done better now knowing what I know. But then after that, here's this, this will make you laugh. So like I got, you know, Jay Connor, private money authorities, you know, information kit. One of my favorite ones. I still have it on my, on my shelf right now. And I went through it. I was super excited. Jay went down to the studio and recorded my, my, my CD. All right. Make, make, make me look official. And we were just getting started back then. I think I was a poor millionaire or something like that. Not, not nowhere near what we are now. And, um, I knew I wanted to raise private money, but then I knew I had to just get somebody to go on an appointment with me. Like, so I went to this individual's house and he's now like a dear friend of ours. And I rang the doorbell, showed up right on time, about one minute early, you know, firm handshake, went and we sat down at this kitchen table and I slid him across the private money CD and I read him the script and I handed him my current portfolio at that time, which was probably only a few million dollars. And he looks down at the portfolio, looks down at the CD, looks at the pamphlet Jay made, and he goes, this is all really nice, but at the end of the day, it's just a fancy way for you to ask me for money. And I looked up at him and I go, well, did, did it work? And he goes, yeah, it worked. <laughs> so how much, how, much that, how, much that, how much did that... How much did that private lender end up loaning to you? We're doing. Over the years now, he's... No, probably over a million aggregate. I mean, he's one of our go-tos. You only awesome. need a couple of, of these people that you want to help. You, you know what I mean? You don't need a whole lot of them unless you're going to be scaling 10, 12 deals a month. You know, um, you just need, we have six. That's it. And from that six, they've kept us busy and busy over the years, you know? So Steve, how did you feel when you were like, finally able to like break through, finally realize that, you know, private money was the thing that you were missing in your business and, you know, start making, you know, more money per deal. How'd that make you feel? It was awesome. Like you, you can buy any piece of real estate, you know, you're, it, you know, if I, I always tell people if I didn't have a limited lifespan as we all do, and I could live for infinity, it might take me 10,000 years, but I could own the whole world. <laughs> you have to think, you think like that. It, it's true because like, you you know, if you, if you know creative financing and you know private money, it's an unlimited amount of real estate that you can buy. And it's not the property you're buying, you're buying the challenge around it. So, you know, disease, death, displacement, separation from a spouse, and then the ultra rich that don't want to be inconvenienced with a move will always be forever rotating amongst the properties, if that makes sense. Sure. Well, Steve, I tell you, I am so excited about this brand new private money guide that I just recently finished writing. And it's called seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. And this guide I've just written will put someone on the fast track to getting private money and never missing out on a deal because they didn't have the funding for it. And so you can go to right now, www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's jayconner.com forward slash money guide. You can download it for free and it will put you on the fast track to private money. So Steve, when you started raising private money, where do you find these people? So, you know, you're not borrowing money from institutions or banks. Um, you know, these individuals are not hard money lenders. Where in the world do you find them? So if you, you know the people that have, you know, a million or a multi-million dollar net worth, right? Everybody knows who they are. Everybody knows who had a good career and everybody knows who has like IRA capital that's, you know, literally just sitting there. And so if you, once you get good at real estate investing and once pe the other people start turning an eye they're like, and you get, you know, this, your portfolio is built up, people start just to really watch this. And then you just tell stories to people, like how you made this person a whole bunch of money and how it was a fixed rate of return, how it's, you know, backed by a hard asset attached to the earth and only 75% leveraged all in. You know, um, and then the good word spreads, the good word spreads. And then people honestly just start to call you. I mean, they, they really do. Once you burn through that top 50 list. 
-hmm. So, you know, there's different strategies for raising private money. I mean, you can be at a, you know, a networking event talking about private money. You can be at a, a social gathering. You can actually have a intentional private lender luncheon where you invite potential private lenders to a luncheon and you teach them what private money is of all the strategies that you've used to attract private money. What is your favorite strategy for locating it um, and doing business with these private lenders? Right now in our business, it's relationship. I take them out to lunch. We'll take them out to a, you know, waterfront, nice, nice lunch. And we actually get to know them. Like they'll come over, they'll swim in my pool. Um, we'll go to dinners. You know, we go to events. Like they, they become my friend. You know, uh, a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. So these people are most of them people you already had a relationship with. So here's what I'll get total give ready. So some of them we've had a relationship with, but I'll let you know a little secret. The secret is on these seller finance deals that involve the ultra rich. Now the ultra rich is like greater net worth than why don't we say $2 million, right? I mean, that's just a very conservative amount. So once they go to sell real estate, they don't want to be inconvenienced whatsoever. They're just going to go buy their next piece. They're going to move. They're not probably not going to list it. They are very susceptible to seller financing. And oftentimes, a lot of them have life insurance policies that have bought the other assets with, with a loan against them. And so in order to accomplish the move stress-free to them, they will extend seller financing in the first position, matching the same rate as what the life insurance policy would have gave. Now the secret is when we lease option those to a tenant buyer and, and a couple of years later, those ones usually get cashed out, right? Now that person doesn't need the money. It, it's true. And we go back to them and I go, Hey, you're getting cashed out early. Like it wasn't our intention. This is just the way it, it, it works sometimes. However, I have a solution for you. What if I could pay you a high rate of return that is much higher than the life insurance policy? Would something like that interest you? And then of course, you know what they're going to say next. And then you go into it with them. What if we transferred, you know, and borrowed on a first position on this property over here and we were able to pay 8%. You know, and we've converted, I can say like, you know, at, at one time, like two, three, four hundred thousand dollars just transferring like that. Interesting, Steve. Interesting. So just to make sure uh, we're perfectly clear, what's the difference between private money, like you're talking about borrowing mm -hmm. and say hard money? What's a hard money lender versus a private money lender? So a hard money lender is in the lending business, right? So they're going to want anywhere between 12 and probably 18% on the money. They're going to ask for a personal guarantee. They may require an appraisal on the property. So those ones you can't really, it's just, they're in the money business. You, you know, some of them play with 5 million, seven and a half million, and they rack it at 15%. Now they're always there. They're not, they're in any city. I mean, they're, they're good for a loan. However, it's a big spread of the deal that you're going to give up working with them, you know? Um, so we only use those types of lenders if we've exhausted all the money that's out there with the private lenders first, if that makes sense. What's your favorite reason or favorite reasons to use private money, say, instead of hard money or any other type of funding? The closing is smoother. So once you have a attorney that you know and trust and that wants to work with you on the creative financing deals, one, they want to work with you because you're going to be a frequent flyer to them and also that you know your stuff and you're not going to mess things up and create more work for them. They like the private lenders better and so do we because the paperwork is just so much easier and it's easier to be streamlined and it doesn't come with like a huge stack of paperwork and involving another attorney. You know, the list goes on and on. So the simplif simplification of closing um, is the preferred way with the relationship built private lenders. So when you say the closing goes so much smoother, uh, what do you mean by that? How is a private money loan smoother than say traditional funding institutions, hard money, et cetera? Oh, because there's just so much more paperwork 
with with the other way and they won't even wire the funds in until they get all the paperwork back and then check it over and then if there's any changes they're going to send it back and it's just so much more work for everybody i mean half the time that we do private money loans the money's already there we just have to button up the paperwork you know for the next couple of days so so you're saying uh, are you saying that you're able to close your private money loans quicker than using traditional money and funds Yeah, a lot, a lot more uh, efficiently, faster. Um, and when, by the time we get to the closing, it's just kind of small talk. There's no nuts and bolts and unfinished like things that have to happen to, to get the money to be able to be loaned. Right. Now, how are you protecting your private money lenders? Uh, are you borrowing unsecured money? Uh, sometimes, actually. Uh, most of the time they're in first position. I'd say 90% of the time they're in a first position mortgage. Now, some of them, if they are concerned about, you know, having to go through the foreclosure process to alleviate that, we have offered a deed in lieu of foreclosure for a non-payment, which makes them not have to foreclose. Now, you know, you're in business to help people. You know, if you're going to make not do things the right way and not operate by a certain, you know, core values, you know, the people shouldn't have to chase you if something's going to go haywire. Right. And also you should reach into your own pockets and some, you know, some way to make restore them to whole, like they're not going to lose money. I'm not going to allow it. You know what I mean? Um, and that's the, the mentality that you have to go into that because it's not just one, one deal. We're in this for the rest of my life, right? We're in this for the next, X, you know, one deal is nothing. It's one deal. You're not going to get rich off one, one deal, but enough of them are going to set you free. And that's what you want is that legacy of freedom to do whatever it is that you want to do all day long. And that comes from good relationships and core values. Well, Steve, I've got one question left for you before we call uh, this show a wrap. And that is, when someone is a real estate investor, they've never raised private money before, but they want to raise private money. Uh, what is the best way from your experience? What advice would you give to someone wanting to raise private money that's never raised private money before and the best way to get started? What advice would you give them? The advice that I would give you is invest in yourself first. Show the lender that you've taken education very seriously and have paired up with people that have walked the walk and talked the talk. And only then will you take your unequivocal excellence and your core values to them. And, and also at that point, you should have a deal, right? So at the end of the day, this is about attracting motivated sellers and finding an awesome deal. So if you have, you know, those three things, right. And you bring it into a lender and you take a swing at it. It's like the stars have aligned. Because not only do you have the vehicle for them, but you've proven that you invested in yourself. That means that they are completely comfortable with knowing that they're going to get paid back. And once they're completely comfortable with getting paid back, which is the very first important thing, and then the high rate of return back by a hard asset safely and securely, they will lend to you. Awesome. Steve, thank you so much for joining me here on uh, Raising Private Money. I really appreciate you, my friend. Jay, you are a true friend. You changed my life for sure. You took Freedom Sky's business to another level and we are forever grateful. <laughs> That's awesome, Steve. Thank you again for joining me. And thank you, my listener, for being right here on the show with me today. I really appreciate you showing up. And I also appreciate if you found this show to be of value, be sure to like, uh, share, subscribe, and even more importantly, give me a five-star review. I really appreciate that. Five stars in a review as to how this show impacted your life. And one more thing, be sure and share this show with someone that you think would enjoy it as well and get value from it. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level. And we'll see you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money.
Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Conner.